When light enters the eye, it passes through the cornea, which is made up of proteins, and it passes through the pupil, that's the dark part at the center of your eye, and the light passes all the way through that until it strikes the retina, which is along the back surface of the eye, where the rods and the cones are. And as light strikes that surface, it stimulates those cells, and those stimulations pass along the optic nerve, sends the signal to our brains, and our brains are where those signals are interpreted and we can interpret them as different colors, different shapes, light and dark, things of that nature. And so if there's anything that prevents light from passing through the pupil and being able to strike the retina, that can lead to limited vision or loss of vision. And in the chemistry lab we need to be careful because sometimes accidents happen, uh, glass breaks, or things spill and splash. And if things were to splash into our eyes, they might react with the cornea and cause damage which would limit our vision. And so in this demonstration, we use cow eyes to simulate what would happen to our eyes if we were exposed to something of a chemical nature. In this first picture, you see uh, the cow's eye and it's dark in the center. That's just like our pupil. It's undamaged and this is our control so this will be the eye that we will compare all the others against so we can see the difference what we're going to use in our simulation is sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid commonly you find this in car batteries so when you look under the hood of the car you see all those warning labels sulfuric acid is very corrosive that means that it reacts with different materials and so the eyes being very sensitive would be susceptible to action by the sulfuric acid. We're going to talk about three different potential scenarios. In the first scenario, you have an exposure to the sulfuric acid. It gets splashed in your eyes, and nobody is helping you uh, get across the room to the eye wash station. So by the time you manage to stumble across the lab and get to the eye wash fountain, it's about 30 seconds. With 30 seconds of exposure to sulfuric acid before you're able to rinse the eye, you can see the considerable amount of damage that has been caused here. That white area that you see is opaque. That is the same area as would be right here in the diagram. And being opaque, light can't pass through. So light would not be able to get through the pupil back to the retina, and this eye would pretty much be blind. That is permanent damage, and uh, it can't be washed off. It's very similar to when you take an egg and you put it in a frying pan and that clearish milky uh, substance, the egg white, when it hits the heat of the pan, the heat reacts with those proteins and alters them into the solid white color that you see. You can't undo that change just as you cannot undo this change. In the second scenario, we'll say that your lab partner is calm, cool, and collected. You get the splash to the eyes, but your partner realizes they need to get you to the eye wash station. So they take you by the arm, they guide you over to the eye wash station, and we'll say that that cuts your transit time down to about 10 seconds. So with 10 seconds of time between exposure to the point at which you are able to wash your eye out, we see that you still have some discoloration of the cornea, some clouding of the cornea, but it's not necessarily to the extent of 30 seconds exposure, which we would expect. But that still is going to severely limit the amount of light that is able to pass through and strike the retina. In the final scenario, probably the best case of the worst case scenarios, if you think, want to think of it that way, if you were right at the eye wash station, and so you had the splash to the eyes, but then you immediately were able to get your face down into the eye wash station and rinse your eyes. Even if you were able to rinse your eyes immediately, you can see that there is still some cloudiness that occurs. And so the moral of the story here is when you talk about splashes to the eye, the reaction is immediate. And depending on what the substance is, the damage that can be caused can be immediate. So always remember to wear your safety glasses whenever you're working with chemicals, heat, or glassware in the chemistry lab.